most holy God. We lift up Israel into your hands. We know that the devil stirred up people against your people. We ask that you would protect them. Enter the minds and hearts of the terrorists so they will stop what they're doing. These things we lift in the name of Christ, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Sometimes I forget what some of the stories are in the Old Testament. You got to realize that Jesus used the Old Testament for all of his stories. And this is one example. In Isaiah, in the fifth chapter, I will sing for the one I love a song about his vineyard. My loved one had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He dug it up and cleared it of stones and planted it with the choicest wines. He built a watchtower in it and cut out a wine press as well. Then he took looked for a crop of good grapes, but it yielded only bad fruit. Now you who dwellers in Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more could have been done for my vineyard that I have, than I have done for it? When I looked for good grapes, why did it yield only bad? Now I will tell you what I am going to do with my vineyard. I will take away its hedge and I, it will be destroyed. I will break down its wall and it will be trampled. I will make it a wasteland, neither pruned nor cultivated, and briars and thorns will grow there. I will command the clouds not to rain on it. The vineyard of the Lord Almighty is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah are the garden of his delight. And he looked for justice, but saw bloodshed, for righteousness, but heard cries of distress. And jumping to the letter to the Philippians in the fourth chapter, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and the minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Hear the word of the Lord from the Gospel of Matthew in the 21st chapter. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it and dug a wine press and built a watchtower. Then he rented the vineyard to some farmers and went away on a journey. When the harvest came, time approached, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his fruit. The tenants seized his servants, they beat one, they killed another, and stoned the third. Then he sent other servants to them more than the first time, and the tenants treated them the same way. Last of all, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and take his inheritance. So they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, the owner of the vineyard comes. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? He will bring those wretches to a wretched end, they replied, and he will rent the vineyard to other tenants who will give him his share of the crop of the harvest. Jesus said to them, have you never read in scripture, the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone? The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who will produce fruit. He who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, but he on whom it falls will be crushed. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. About a month ago, if you recall, I was given uh, the suggestion by the district superintendent that I take a vacation, so I took a week and went to Florida. And I went to a Florida football game, and 
Of course, you have to do the tailgates beforehand. And I found as I got to the first tailgate that I was kind of a legend. And I had forgotten what they were talking about. But they told me the story and then they came back to me. When I was a junior in college, way back in the good old days, we would go on Saturday morning to the football field and run through our pregame and work on perfecting the halftime show which would be done at 2 o'clock. Well, that's when the game started. And we'd get there at 9, and we'd cut off at 12, so we had a chance to take our instruments back to the music building, go get lunch, go to our rooms or apartments, get dressed in our uniforms, come back. So we're ready at 1.30 to march down the street to the stadium and into the stadium. Well, one day we were doing our practice in the morning and it was 12 30 and we're all starting to get anxious because that only left an hour to do all that other stuff because we had to be at the music building at 1 30 and the director he had a history of going ballistic and really chewing people out if he they got on his nerves (laughs) he said we got time to do this one more time And I don't know what possessed me, but I said, by whose watch? (laughs) I didn't say it loud enough, I think, to be heard, but half the band started laughing. And then you hear our director say, by my watch, who said that? (laughs) I'm just glad they didn't rat me out. I didn't realize I'd kind of become a hero that day because I said what everybody was feeling. But what do you do with a director you think is, or a boss you think is unfair? And that's what I think the tenants of the vineyard were thinking in Jesus' parable. He's going to take it all? That's not fair. And then they acted really poorly toward the people who were collecting the harvest to go back. So what do you do with something like that? I mean, you could conceivably, if you're legalistic enough, to twist it and say, we're working hard here. We need to be paid for this. And he's taking all harvest? That's not fair. Remember the old parable last week. Jesus said, didn't the master say he's going to pay how he felt like paying? Well, that's a situation that is going to call into question what's going on up here and what's going on down here. Of course, Jesus is going to approach it from the point he's talking to some people who are trying to trap him. And so he tells a story. And the owner sends his son. He said, they'll respect my son. But they kill the son thinking they're going to get his inheritance. And then he asked him, what, would, what do you suppose Master of the Vineyard's going to do? And the people who are trying to trap him give him the right answer. See, he's going to come and punish them and get new tenants to come in that'll do that. Little did they know what Jesus was getting at. Now, that's what our head says is justice. He's going to punish these people and bring in more tenants so that they can do the work. Sounds logical, doesn't it? But Jesus isn't talking about just picking grapes. And God's plan all along was not only was God going to bless Israel, but they're supposed to bless the world and go out and bring the rest of the world back to God. They didn't do that. In fact, they still don't do that. There's not a lot of Jewish evangelists in this world. And that's what they were all called to be. They were called to tell people about God. Their God saved them from slavery, brought them through the 
waters, yada, 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 the story. They're supposed to tell the world this is our God, stronger than anyone else's God. Remember the story about Elijah and the prophets of Baal? He said, set up your altar, put your offering on there, and have Baal strike it and, with lightning and put it on fire and burn up your offering. i wait. All day long, nothing happens. And then he says, here's my altar, there's my offering. Pour water on it. Oh, pour some more water on it. Okay, Lord. Lightning strikes. You know, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Not that God's going to make lightning strike at our command, but we're supposed to be telling people about the God that saves people from their sins, right? And what does Jesus tell the people? You know, you haven't been doing your job. God's going to get you out of here and give to what God gave to Israel. God's going to give to people who will produce fruit. He did not say, God's going to take what he gave Israel and give it to Christians. Uh-oh. Think about that one. He didn't say he's going to give it to my followers, the Christians. He said he's going to give it to whoever produces fruit. So now we've got to ask ourselves, what kind of fruit has my life produced? Unfortunately, the seeds we've planted, you're never going to find out what happened to them. Unless neither of you have left the area or left the county since you planted the seed. You're probably going to run into them. But think of all the people you've talked to in your life. How many seeds have you planted about God and God's love for them? And how many of them are you never going to see again? Chances are, I'd say, most of them. Doesn't matter. We're supposed to be planting the seeds of God's love, God's forgiveness. We need to tell people this. Let God produce fruit. Let other people come along and put some fertilizer on it, build it up. Let other people come along and maybe harvest it. We're supposed to be planting, every Christian is supposed to be planting seeds. Because you can't get fruit unless you plant the seeds. That's like the people say, well, I didn't win the lottery again. I used to, Loretta would say that. i say, well, Loretta, you've got to buy a ticket. Not, and it's like the picture of the farmer or the guy standing on a spade said God didn't give you a shovel and tell you to pray for a hole we're supposed to do stuff for God and I look out among you and you're all beautiful souls okay I love all your souls Politically, we may disagree. I don't care, but I see beautiful souls out there, and you got a lot of love to give. Why we're not doing it, I don't know, but we as a church need to do that. Be intentional. And some of you, I'm sure, are doing this as you go through life. It's just second nature. And I give thanks for those of you who do that. You know, you're not all called to be a minister. You're not all called to play the piano. You're not all called to be in the trustees, you know. But we are all called to tell other people about the love of God. I met, ran into a guy, never met him before in town here. And he said the only time he'd ever been to church was for someone else's wedding. I said, well, let's talk about this. Now, we meet at 11 o'clock Sunday morning to find God. You're welcome to come. I didn't say worship or church or anything like that. Just to find God. He's not here today, so I don't know what that's 
Maybe I just planted the seed, walk away. That's what we're called to do. And what Isaiah is talking about is really the same thing Jesus would like to talk to him about. Is I, The master plants the choicest vines and it produces garbage fruit. Nice fertilizer, watered it. Choices, vines that have a history of good fruit. Let's turn on garbage. Sour grapes. And Isaiah says God's going to tear down the thing and let animals trample it and everything. And Jesus takes it a step further saying God's going to give someone else who will produce fruit. See, I think Christianity in the 21st century has become like he, the Jewish faith, the Hebrews of Isaiah's time. They have a job to do. They're not doing it. We have a job to do. And we're spending all our time, liberals, conservatives, battling and fighting. We've got to stop doing that because the devil's winning. Now, I understand the liberals want us to move this direction and the conservatives say, I don't like that direction. We would rather go right here where the faith has been for thousands of years. Either way you go, we need to plant seeds. I'm not saying one's right and the other's wrong. I'm saying we all need to plant seeds. That's the whole point. What's going on in our vineyard up here? What's going on in our vineyard in here? See, that's the problem the, the Pharisees had when Jesus was there. They said, yeah, the guy, the guy should get rid of these tenants and punish them and get new people in there. Their heads knew what was right. When it comes to their religion, their hearts were not on that page because they weren't doing what God wanted them to do. And they were thinking in their hearts, like the guy who said, said let's kill the son so we can get his inheritance. Their head and their heart weren't together. They were not at peace. There was war going on between the two. And when the devil gets in our thoughts or in our hearts, we get nervous. When the devil's acting on us, you're going to feel upset. You're going to be uptight. You're going to be nervous. You're going to want to rush through things. I think that's what's going on in the highways. Everyone thinks they've got to be faster than everybody else. Well, the devil wants to destroy us. And if it's through a car accident, go ahead. Faster, faster. Get there first. Devil wants to destroy us, wants to destroy our faith, wants to destroy us as people. So we can reel him in and fill up his hell. And the world is working with him. And we gotta plant seeds to turn the tide back the other way. Because I don't want anyone to end up in eternal torment. I don't want anyone to go there. Even people I disagree with politically. I don't want them to end up down there. We're going to disagree. That's fine. I can handle it. God's big enough for everybody. But what I'm starting to see is people saying, you shouldn't think that way, so we're going to have to get rid of you. Be careful of that. This has been a country where we've had free thought. And there are people out there that would like to take it away. In our free thought, we've got freedom to think whatever we want. But you will not have peace unless what's up here and what's up here are in agreement. We won't have the peace that passes understanding until we're seeking Christ. And Christ says, yes, this is the way it's supposed to be thought. This is the way it's supposed to work out. See, our emotions, it's a language of the soul. 
It doesn't have words as language. Our emotions are things like fear and anger. They drive people apart. And there's love and compassion that pull people together. And there's other, other kinds of emotions like anxiety and paranoia and things like that. We have all kinds of emotions. Some of them are to keep us away from danger, like fear. If you're expressing, feeling fear, what's the danger? Ask yourself that. If there's no perceived danger but you're afraid, then tell the devil to go back where he came from because you don't need him in your heart. Because that's what's going on. What's up here and what's up here need to agree. We know what's right. We know, yeah, there's a right and a wrong. We're supposed to be doing the right. We step in it, do the wrong. God forgives. We need to tell the world this. God forgives. God loves. That's our job. Not a very big job. Just tell billions of people that God loves them. Don't worry, a lot of those billions of people are in China and India, so we're never going to see them. But we've got millions in America that just do not know. A couple generations stopped going to church. Now they're raising children, and their children are raising children, and none of them are going to church. They need to know. We need to tell them. What, and then Paul says, whatever is good and lovely and all this stuff, think on these things. Don't think about the drama around us. Because there are people that are filled with the devil that love drama. And the more drama they can get, the happier they are. I know people that watched soap operas thinking that was a pattern of life. I knew one person who watched Days of Our Lives where they spend time manipulating each other. Like, that's supposed to be the way people act toward each other? That's drama. It's unnecessary. We don't need it. And there's people around us that live in nothing but drama. And we need to put that aside. I can watch a drama, a Shakespeare in play. That's all a drama. As long as it stays on stage and doesn't come into my life, I'm happy. I don't need drama. Neither does anybody else. I see more folks my age posting on Facebook. I'm getting too old for drama. <laughs> Got to remember that. Nobody needs it. Nobody needs to feel fear or anxiety or all the negative stuff in the emotional chart. It's our soul's way of trying to cope with a world that doesn't act like we think it should. Our emotions. God gave them to us for a reason. My, par my parents, God love them. May they rest in peace. Grew up in houses where emotions were never allowed. And here I am, all full of emotions, and that's where my problem with them was. Language of the soul. If there's no agreement with the heart, the seat of the emotions, and your brain, the seat of your thoughts and logic and ration and all that, if that doesn't agree, you're going to have turmoil in your heart and your life. And we serve a God who brings peace. But to get what's in our hearts on the same page as God's heart, that takes submission to the Lord. We have to bow our hearts to him and say, God, take over. Too much drama in my life, take over. I want your peace. I need your peace. Anybody with me on that one? I want us all to have that peace. Nobody, uh, two voices spoke up. So I don't know about the rest of you. 
We want the peace of Christ. The peace you just can't put a description to. Where you feel God's peace. You gotta submit to God to get it. But it is wonderful. I get goosebumps thinking about it. And I want you all to have it. If you don't have peace, we need to talk. Because we can get you to that point where you have that peace too. Let's pray. Most holy God, we want peace in our hearts, peace in our minds, peace in our lives. Lord, you know and we know this peace has got to spread around the world or we're doomed. We pray your Holy Spirit will bring your peace to this world. Because it'll only come when you are there. Give us your peace today. And help us to tell others that that peace can be theirs too. This we ask in your son's holy name. Amen. May the peace that passes understanding fill your hearts today and every day. Go forth in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.